Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I want to talk a little bit about my country living gray mill and grinding flowers and why I do that. Now I have a video I did maybe a year ago, I don't know how long ago it was, where I talked about the different grains that I store and how I store them. I'll go ahead and link to that video right up here because you may want to check that out. But I'll go ahead and talk a little bit more about that. Now, why is it that I prefer to store grains rather than storing just flour? Now, I do have some uh, organic, unbleached white flour that I do store because it is a lot more shelf stable. Unlike storing whole wheat flours that have already been ground, they are not shelf stable and if they are shelf stable it is because all the good stuff has actually been removed all the good fat that's in there and so what happens with whole grains is once you grind them and the the wheat germ and the and all that just mixes together it then makes its shelf life only up to 72 hours and by that point you've lost a good amount of the nutrient value of your whole wheat flour. There's not a lot of nutrient value in, in white flour. That's why we try to kind of really cut back and only use it when we really have to and focus more on using the whole grains. So with that said, you're much better off, you're gonna get a much healthier flour if you grind it yourself because if you're buying it from the store and it's saying whole wheat, whole rye or whatever, it's been processed in such a way to make it shelf stable and you've lost a lot of the good nutrient value that way and if it still has everything in it and hasn't been processed then it's lost all its nutrient value because by the time it even gets to the store it's already old it's already past that point so if you take your your grains and you grind them up as needed especially on that day and then immediately put them to use that's going to be the best use and to get the most out of your grains by doing that now so what you see right here is these are grains that i just started soaking a little bit ago and these are soft white wheat spelt hard white wheat and a little bit of buckwheat thrown in there just for just for some extra benefits and then back here are the ones that are have already been soaked and dried and i do have a video on how i do this as well i do it two different ways it depends on the time of the year i'll link to one of them right here but one of them involves using the electric dehydrator hooked up to our solar power during the months that our battery banks are topped off because we're getting a lot of sun and then um on the wood stove or near the wood stove at least in the winter time to to dry so anyway i'll link to one of those you can check it out and see how i do that but yeah these have been pre-soaked and dry and, and these have a little bit of homemade vinegar in it that's how i like to do that now i do have a video on soaking my grains i'll go ahead and link to it right up here so then once the grains are are dry i simply pour the grains however much I want into there and I'll show you a close-up of this as well there we go I got that hooked up correctly this time now I'll go ahead and bring you over and show you the inside of this but in a, in a minute first I want to show you there's with our grain mill the way it's set up we we have it set up so it can be used two different ways I can grind by hand Okay, and when I do that, when I'm grinding by hand, what I like to do is I like to count my rotations, like maybe 20 rotations going that way, 20, I'll switch arms and then do 20 going that way, going overhand first, okay, then underhand, turning the same way, but turning my arm the other way so I'm working different muscles, and then I'll do the same thing on the left hand, so I'll go right, left and then turn my arm the other way right and left so i'm getting a more equal workout all the way across my arms now the other thing you may have noticed is right here is a belt now patrick about a year ago or so i don't recall how long it was because when we first got that i, sp I spent the first couple of years just grinding by hand but it is very time consuming. That's the only problem. I like the workout it gives the arms, but it takes a very long time, especially when you're working with softer grains like the soft white wheat and the spelt. They take much longer to go through, to grind. They're easier to grind. You can spin it faster, but 
for some reason they just they don't go through as quickly where the hard grains like the hard white wheat I can it's harder to turn the wheel but the grains go through faster so it's kind of funny that's one of the reasons why I like using a blend because I get a little of, I get the best of all of the above when I'm working with a mixed blend like this but anyway so Patrick as my time started getting more and more precious because my skirt orders started taking off he took this old motor that he'd found I, I think he might have found it secondhand at garage sale or he, I don't know I can't remember where he got it he has a video on that I'll go ahead and link to it right up here and he explains all that stuff in there but I'll show you this motor back here it's an old motor and what he did is he cleaned it up got it all fixed up and then hooked it up so that we've got a belt here and it hooks to this motor and then it when we turn it on it it's going to spin this wheel so that i can just plug it in and let it go and i don't have to worry about it so when we run it with the with the motor we take the handle off um Frankly, for just me, I don't worry about it because, you know, I'm smart enough to stay away from the from that. But you just never know. It's just for safety reasons. It's best to take the handle off so otherwise it can be spinning around quite quickly. You can see here, here's the grains in there. And one of the nice things about this, uh, you know, if you, they got this press that you put down in there. And if it starts slowing down, you can just kind of press on it. You can do this as you're grinding by hand press it down and that will help it go through a little bit quicker but you can also do it as you're running the motor to it and if you're wondering what this is over here <laughs> it's got some grain stuck in it because I don't use it that much right now but this is a coffee grinder so when I need to co grind coffee by hand he's got this mounted actually directly to this table just like this so they don't move at all they're very solid and sometimes there was times I would even grind coffee and flour all at the same time doing the coffee with the left hand and the flour with the right it takes a little bit of practice getting the rhythm down but you can do it so I want to remind you that this hand the handle if you're gonna use the motor it should come off but I'm gonna to have to go get some tools to take it off and I'm just gonna leave it for now but I'm gonna say it, a reminder as a safety measure take the handle off when you're running a motor with your country living gray mill so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in so you can see how it works. Okay, so I got the grains. You just kind of push them down in there. And that's going to speed up the flow of the flour coming through there. But you don't want to do that too much. You can heat up your motor. Now let me get you down closer. Okay, and then you can see. Kind of see the grains coming out of there. And I'm pushing on it right now with the stick. Now one thing I forgot to do is I usually have a piece of cardboard. It's just a, a cereal box piece of cardboard from our organic cereal that we like to buy. And I like to set that back there and that actually keeps the flour from going back and spreading all over the motor. But this is the container I like to use to catch my flour and then I can just put my snap lock seal on there. And then this little board is sitting here to raise the, uh, the container closer up right under the plate so that it's not spreading out all over the table as it's grinding. So again, I'm going to say it again, make sure you remove the handle if you're going to hook a motor up to it. Now back to the grain mill itself. The country living grain mill is probably, if you're looking into grain mills, it's going to be, as far as I know, the most expensive one you're going to find. Um, for me, this was a really great investment. I it really just depends on what your needs are the reason now some people might look at a KitchenAid and want to and have no problem with the investment in a KitchenAid which for me I do even though this is more expensive than a KitchenAid this to me is far more valuable than a KitchenAid so it's, it's going to depend on you and your needs but what I'm looking at because I understand the health of having your whole grains especially if they've been pre-soaked or even sprouted and then dried and then you're grinding them yourself as you're needing them. you're getting that flour good nice and fresh all the nutrients are still intact and you can grind it and use it right away so and the other reason why this uh this mill to me was the best investment 
is because I have the option of going completely off grid with the handle, the crank handle, which is how it comes, or adding a motor to it for when my time is highly precious. And this we can plug into our solar power and use it that way. We don't actually have a solar power outlet in here, but uh, we can put an extension cord, plug it into our solar power. So if we ever at any time we lose our public power, and I need to grind some flour, I just hook it up to the solar power, no big deal. Or I can go back to just cranking, you know, just grinding it by hand. The other great thing about this is that this is very sturdy. This thing is built like a tank. A lot of the ones that you see on the market are made out of a lot of plastic. There is no plastic on this, none. Everything about it is, it's a cast iron, it's solid metal, and then you got the nice wood handle that comes with it. And I, I think it's worth every penny personally. And I know it's gonna last me a lifetime. And you know what makes this even better? It's not only made right here in the US, it's made right here in my home state, actually only a few hours away from us, which is pretty dang cool. So I was pretty excited to find that out. And, and as a result, I ended up getting mine pretty quickly. But I will put the link down below to the Country Living Grain Mill. That is my Amazon link. And you, you can get it the same price buying directly from the company, but if you buy through Amazon, that helps, you know, if you decide this is the mill you want to go with and you buy through our link, it just helps us a little bit. We get a small percentage from any Amazon purchases made when people go through our links. That's, that's why we do that. But because we're remote, we do actually, I did actually pur purchase this on Amazon, like quite a bit of these kind of things because, you know, getting these things locally is kind of difficult because of where we live. So anyway, this is my grain mill of choice, but go ahead and look into the other ones. I know people that have the Soli, they're just a, like the Wonder Mill, it's only an electric one, and they love it. They say it's great, and you might want to look in that. It's going to be probably more, I think it's about half the cost of getting this, but I don't know how it's made. Um, it's really going to just have to be up to you. Again, I come back to the fact that I like the options I have with this because I can do, go completely off grid. I can hook up to public power I can with, our, with the motor that we added, or I can hook up to solar power. Now, I believe Country Living has, I think this company actually, you can find a motor that you can buy from them or a kit. And I think that might even be available on Amazon as well. I'll go ahead and link to that below. Now, here's the other thing about that, and the link that I'm giving you to this is it also comes with the corn and bean auger, and we have used that a, a few different times now to grind up corn, whether it be the corn that we've grown ourselves or the, the whole corn that we have bought from Azure Standard, the whole organic non-GMO white corn for making white cornbread. And it, it just works great. I'm loving this thing so much. So it has benefits. And we also have a peanut butter auger. And we have made peanut butter with it before. We even have a video on that. I'll go ahead and link to right up here. So again, my this is my personal recommendation. You have to find out what you think is best for you. But this is why we have this. And I wanted to show you. And also why we grind our own flowers and why I recommend it. And sometimes people will find, not, not everyone, I don't think this is the case for every person who has gluten issues, but some people who have, or even just have just regular gut issues, they find that when they switch to an organic non-GMO grain, and then one that they grind up fresh and use right away, they find that they can handle it a lot better. So people who are maybe gluten sensitive might be able to handle a whole, especially if it's a grain, like your einkorn wheat, which I do have some of that too. I wanted to get more on my last order, but they're out of stock right now. I'm really liking that stuff. That's a really good option. So if you're doing that, you're soaking it and you're grinding it and using it fresh, that's going to be the best thing for your gut. And then there was one more thing I wanted to add, is that whole grains like this, in their whole form, they will store for a very long period of time. They can last forever, especially when properly put up. So what I do is I have grains that, they're just sitting in the bags that they came in. I'll show you a picture right here. And they're sitting down in a, in a big bucket that's got a gamma seal top on it. And I'm that's the bag that I'm working through. 
And then I have other grains that I'm working through that are in, I don't go through them as quickly, so I have them in a mylar bag and that I can seal up and then put the gamma seal lid on there. And there's a picture of that right here. And then I have grains that are put away for a long storage that they're also in mylar bags. They're also in the gamma seal bucket. But the difference with those is all the oxygen's been removed and they've been heat sealed, the mylar bag. And so I can let those sit for years and years and years and they're gonna be fine. So I just don't even touch those, I'm not worried about it. So if something happens and I can't get my grains anymore, I can fall back on those at least for a while. So I have a few buckets of those of my of my grains, like spelt, the hard white wheat, and the soft white wheat. Okay, one more thing I wanted to say about the grains and why I buy them in their whole form and store them. Well, that's because they have an incredibly long shelf life in comparison to your flowers. Like I mentioned, your flowers, especially whole grain, if they're whole grain and they're totally intact, they're only good for 72 hours, and that's it. I mean, they're, they're, you're gonna lose all your nutrient value and then they're gonna go rancid. Whereas this, I'm getting the full, all the nutrition, but I can let these sit in storage for many years, especially depending on how they are, how they are stored. So just so you know, there's actually, there was some grains found in a pyramid in Egypt, uh, some wheat grains that they had been in there for about a thousand years and they tested them and found that 50% of them still sprouted. And so, and they, and then testing their nutritional value, they also found that they still held most of their nutritional value. So that's pretty amazing. And I don't know all the storage methods that were used, but I know they didn't have mylar bags back then and gamma seal buckets. But if you do, you put your grains, and I do this, I have s several buckets, big, big five gallon buckets, actually more like seven gallon buckets, gamma seal lid, mylar bags the grains are in the bags we've taken all the oxygen out and we vacuum sealed them i know those are going to last for at least 25 years and so those ones i just leave i don't worry about rotating through those because i know they're going to last a very long time i've done the same thing with popcorn because popcorn is also that way it will last they've done the same they found popcorn that was 800 years old and still popped if you go check out that video I mentioned earlier in the video, you can see more information on how I store my grains, but there's just a quick rundown. But the, the thing is, is if you're in, into preparedness and wanting to put up food for long-term storage for when hard times hit, whatever that may be, something that happens only to you, like whether it be a job loss, an illness, some kind of accident uh, that causes you to be in the hospital for long periods of time, knowing that you have food put up uh, is just a really great thing and so knowing how to store up your grains rather than f just flowers is really important so one more time the country living grain meal is what I recommend and at least go check it out and do a little shopping around and see what you think is best for you go find the other channels too that have different grain mills that they really like and you just kind of compare and figure out a uh, what you think is going to be the best according to your situation and also financially because again this is not this is not cheap but as i said to me it's worth every penny and i'm glad that we made the investment it took us a few years to invest but uh it's one of those things you can just keep putting money away and save up for if you think it's important but anyway well i hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new thanks for watching take care and god bless